Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 5 of Taboo Talks. I'm really excited to get on here today and share a very personal story with you guys about what led me to, I guess, begin podcasting and specifically in the area of communication. Why I'm so passionate about communication because it starts from a very young age about how I was raised and kind of how my ideas and my view of the world changed as I grew up which is something we can all relate to because as we get older, our views do change, you know, based on our experiences and what we're going through. So this episode isn't going to have a ton of references from expert articles and um, resources like the previous ones because my point here is not to educate you necessarily, but just to share with you. Um And by educating you, I don't mean that I'm like teaching you because a lot of this stuff is not personally my research or anything like that, but things that I've used, tools that I've used to educate myself um, that I share with you guys. And today I really just want to share a personal story with you that I think a lot of us can relate to. I don't really have a script or anything like that, so I'm just going off the whim here, um, just what makes sense and kind of what comes out as I'm talking with you guys. But it's only in the last year or so, possibly even less, but more in the last year or so, that I realized my obsession and my passion with communication and especially um, mental health and overall physical health. I'm super interested in all things related to that and um, preventing and making you know, those symptoms and those experiences uh, less, I guess, traumatic. But definitely in the last year, I've realized um, how much I love communicating and speaking with people. I also love my alone time and my downtime, you know, at home or wherever I'm at by myself to just kind of recover, recoup and think about my life because that's how I make sense of things. I just go through it in my mind and I kind of work it out on my own or with my husband or with some very close friends of mine that I have. And it's kind of funny. So I'm just kind of a precursor to this. My husband and I were stationed with our units in South Korea. This was 2016 or so. And it was actually while I was out in the field um, we were in some field training, so we were going to be out there for, I think, a few days, if I remember correctly, and it was freezing, so I was all bundled up. Um, I have pictures of it that I'll probably share, but I was all bundled up. It was cold. The elevation is a lot higher, so sometimes it's a little bit harder to breathe because there's mountains there, and I remember I was sitting in our medic vehicle, so we were in a 113, um, It's basically a big metal can, and so that was freezing too. And I was sitting there writing in my little field journal that I have. It's something that I used to do when I would go to the field, just kind of plan my life. And, you know, when we weren't doing training or um, covering ranges and things like that, we had some downtime to sleep or, you know, catch up on other things, hygiene, whatever we're doing, right? So I'm sitting there with my field journal And I'm just kind of going through my big life plans. I do this often. I told you guys previously in other episodes that I'm a huge list person and I make lists about everything. And so here I was making a list of things that I wanted to do for my life. And I don't remember exactly what that list consisted of today, but I do remember at some point going through it and realizing that most all of everything I wanted to do had to do with communicating or sharing or speaking um, either publicly or with other people. So it wasn't in a sense of like therapy or anything like that. I don't feel like I'm the type of person to have the energy for that. Um, But I love sharing and I love speaking and motivating people through that. And I remember speaking to a good friend of mine. Um, I won't say his name, but he was out there with me. He was a medic out there with me on the um, field training exercise that we had. And I just remember talking to him because he was very motivational also, his wife. And and he are very, um, 
young couple and very motivational also and uh, big dreams. So I remember going up to him and I'm like, hey, like, this is what I'm going to do with my life. Like we had had previous talks about success and, you know, how to get there and how to make your life what you want it to be. And so just being out in the field and having everything written down, you know, I was so motivated to just share with somebody <laughs> like this light bulb that I had. And I remember telling him, like, I'm, this is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to be a motivational speaker, um, not because I think I know everything, but because this is something I'm passionate about and, and think that I would love doing. And, oh man, that was like, that was, that was two years ago now. So about a year ago, that was my first realization, by the way, that's, that's what was the point of that story. That was my first first realization that, hey, this might be my real passion and what I really want to do. So fast forward a year or so, and, you know, we're back from Korea. I started looking into Toastmasters, which is a public speaking group. Um, it's a national wide, I guess, known group that you do pay membership fees to be a part of, and they challenge you and help you grow in the world of communication and public speaking. They have a lot of competitions and things like that. So I started looking into that, um, couldn't really find anything out there. We were in Kansas at the time, couldn't really find anything that I wanted to jump on at the time with um, the schedule that we worked and the hours that we worked. And by the way, I was also pregnant at the time um, with my daughter. So it was just kind of a lot going on, but the whole time I just had this huge desire that like, this is what I'm going to do. I started looking at TED Talks and, and TEDx events to look at, you know, nearby ones, how I could become part of some of the events that were hosted locally near us. I mean, I was on this and in this. And so I really feel that like this... Last year, before I finally um, decided to start this podcasting, I kind of sat on it. I had my daughter, and I had all these dreams and ideas of what I was going to do and what kind of platform I was going to have, and I talked to my husband about it all the time. I would literally <laughs> like research. I'm researching, researching, researching. You know, it was like a constant thing that was on my mind that... I just, I want to be successful. This is like, I'm, th something is happening. Something big is going to happen in my life. And it's not going to happen unless I'm doing the legwork to get it there. And so finally, I want to say a few weeks ago, maybe, or maybe months, you know, time kind of blends all together. Anyways, I was talking to my husband once again about what I wanted to do with life and all these big dreams that I had. And he finally just got really real with me and was like, you know, none of this is going to happen unless you just start it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So for those of you that know me or if you don't know me or for those of you that can relate because I know for a fact I'm not the only one out there like this, I have huge dreams and I can see the big picture of what I want, how I want it uh, to be when I reach, you know, the end. I have a really hard time figuring out and discerning how to even get there. What are those little steps, those uh, steps that I have to take along the way to get there? And even now that's something I struggle with because I get so obsessed with the big picture that I don't really know how to fill in the steps to get there. And on top of that, um, some of the anxieties that I have, which I think um kind of manifest itself in a way that makes me seem like a perfectionist, um, which isn't really like perfectionist. So if you go into perfectionism and all that stuff, there's a lot of research on it that actually proves um, a connection with uh, anxiety and that, you know, if you have anxiety-based perfection, like a fear of failing or a fear of not doing enough, then that's kind of what um, motivates that. So I have a really hard time just starting, just getting started, knowing where to start, starting with those baby steps. Obviously, it's really hard to build a following. You have to market and get yourself out there and also have content that 
people are actually interested in listening to. So it's a very scary thing. It's extremely intimidating and it's very easy sometimes to feel like a failure when you don't get the results that you want immediately. And so all of those things kind of led to this fear of me failing and, and the fear of what if, you know, it doesn't turn out the way I want it to when I start? What if it's not perfect enough? What if it isn't the level that I need to be at to um, reach the audience that I'm trying to reach? And like I said, my husband just got really real with me and he was like, it's never going to be perfect and I'm not going to reach the level that I want to reach if I don't start. So it kind of goes along with uh, that quote, if you guys have heard it. Tomorrow, you would have wished that you started today or next year, you would have wished that you started today. Basically saying that each day you let go by without doing anything is a day wasted, is a day that you could have begun. And I used to sit there and look at, you know, CEOs and celebrities and wealthy people that have met the success because I don't, it's not even all about the money. The money is nice. The money is a bonus, but I'm, I'm talking like legacy here, like Gary Vaynerchuk legacy. And I would look at all these successful people because I know if I want to get there, I need to do some of the things that they did to get where they are. And so I just got swallowed up in this I guess, lack of understanding of what steps I needed to take to get where I wanted to be. And I guess what I wanted to share with you guys um, today based on just this most recent lesson, I have so many more share, like stories to share and lessons learned to share because it's been a pretty rough um, first 20 some odd years of um, my life. It hasn't been horrible, but I've definitely learned some intense lessons but I just, I really became passionate in communication. And I think communicating is so important. We communicate every day, whether it's verbally, non-verbally with our body language, you know, aggressive, passive aggressive, any, anything that you can use to describe the way that you're communicating with people is a communication. And I really don't believe that we focus enough on that. I sucked at communication. I was horrible at it. Um, and this is why I'm so glad that my husband finally gave me that extra push that I needed to start doing this podcasting because I literally would sit there and stress and, you know, just kind of want to pull my hair out because I just couldn't get it perfect in my head. And he was right. I mean, since I've started this, it's just been a few weeks now and we're, we haven't even made it to the official launch yet. And I'm so excited for that. But it's been so not easy, but just like liberating. And it just feels right that it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll even see in my first couple episodes, a few things that I changed here and there just based on what I think might sound better or what I like better um, for the vibe that I'm going with. And the stress that I felt is gone because I'm not worrying about the what ifs anymore. Now it's, now it's, I'm doing this, I'm committed and I'm in this. And now it's, what do I need to do? Not what if, you know, it's what can I do to make this happen? So still figuring out those baby steps. I'm not saying that I have it all figured out because I don't, I'm really excited for you guys to be on this journey with me and with us. Um, but I'm so passionate about communication and I'm going to talk about that a lot throughout Taboo Talks and I'm even developing a short course. It's a four-week course on basic communication because I've done so much research and gone through so much therapy and so many classes over the last years about communication um, that I realize a lot of the issues we have in society, in our relationships, at work, at school, is all pretty specific to communicating and not communicating appropriately for the situation that we're in. So I got off on kind of a little rabbit trail there, but communication is a big thing and that's why you guys are gonna hear me talk about it a lot and I hope it's gonna be really good stuff for you. So that's where I got into podcasting, right? So I said about two years ago, 
I was in Korea and finally had that light bulb. And I don't even know where it came from, to be honest. It was just like this awe effect. Like, this is it. I couldn't be any closer to discovering what my purpose is. And it, it there was nothing really that led me to that. It was just, I guess, the frank realization that I love talking and sharing with people and communicating. Um, that is when I began looking at motivational videos and public speaking and motivational speaking and how people really dive into that profession. So maybe you're out there and you're like me and you're having a hard time just knowing where to start or just starting because you have this great image or this picture of where you're going to be or what you're going to do. Um, maybe you feel like you're treading water. Maybe you feel like you're making movement but not progress. That's something that I heard Will Smith say in one of those motivational speeches and it blew my mind because it's so simple and profound as don't confuse movement with progress. And I think it's Will Smith. Don't quote me on that because I could be wrong. I've listened to a lot of speeches over the last year or so. But maybe you're treading water and you don't know where to start or how to start. I would really encourage you guys to just just start. Like start with the basics. You don't have to be, you know, this 12,000 subscribed channel to just start and have content and share what your passion is regardless of what you're doing. And I'm saying this because I had the hardest time. I mean, since... Since I realized what my passion was over two years ago now to today and starting this podcast a few weeks ago, like the fact that it took me two years to even get here, just think of how much like progress and how much ground I could have covered in those two years. And I haven't because I sat on it for so long. And I really hope that my frustration with myself and how long it took me to jump on this and to just start chasing after my passion. I really hope that you guys hear this and that you make the decision to start whatever it is that you've been putting off that you started today. Just one thing if you, that you would start today, whatever it is that you've been waiting on. And if you feel like you did start, but you're not really going anywhere and you feel like you're treading water, start over, start again. But... My main reason for um, sharing this shortcast podcast with you guys today um, about, I guess, how I came into a passion of communication and where I started with the podcasting. If you watch my interview, the host, you'll see that my husband actually got me into podcasting because he knew that I listened to motivational videos and people speaking. And so podcasting really was what I wanted, you know, he could tell that that would be something that I would be interested in. And I really hope that you guys find a little motivation in this. There's not a whole lot of um, scientific research at all. There's very little, if any, to this podcast. I'm sorry, you know, hopefully I didn't waste your guys' time. But I just felt that it was so important for you to know that you shouldn't wait you know, do the research that you need to do, take the time that you need to take, but don't let your fear of whatever it is that you're doing, failing or not being perfect, don't let that stop you. Because here I am two years later, and I could have covered so much ground and and been so much further in my journey if I didn't let that fear stop me. And, And the crazy thing too is I didn't even think that I was fearful. Like I just thought I was this bold person and that, you know, the military groomed me to be this strong, you know, independent and, and fierce soldier. And I realized when it came to my personal life and business and what I wanted to do with my passion, I was fearful and it was completely paralyzing me and stopping me from making the progress that I could have made so if you guys take anything away from today just know this you should start today so that two years down the road you don't regret all the time that you wasted waiting around and dabbling with other stuff um thank you guys for joining me again today for my personal story it's not too deep we're not getting into those sticky subjects yet but they are coming and 
I hope that you guys are a little bit encouraged, a little bit motivated to start a project or, you know, start a routine, start a diet, anything, work on your communication. Um, I hope that you guys are encouraged today to do that. And I hope that you come back and join us for a very special episode next Friday. I'll post more about that on our social media outlets. Uh, but stay tuned. Big things are coming. We're getting closer to our new year launch. And um, yeah, I'm excited to have you guys with us. Thank you so much. This is Ashley Rodriguez with Taboo Talks. And I'm so glad that you joined us today. Be safe out there, guys. Mm-hmm.